to finish in verifying that one side of an identity is in fact equal to the other side of an identity. So that's the idea behind what we're doing today. So we're mostly going to just go through a bunch of examples. So just to clarify the rules I told you you could copy down earlier. Um, the main rules are, or the main rule I guess, it's kind of just one thing. You can work on each side of, oh I guess I'm rewriting this a little differently, I'm kind of putting it in my own words. I'm trying to get the same gist of what I had on the yellow paper. You can work on each side of an identity separately, but you cannot use the rule that says you can, what you do to one side you do to the other. I am totally rewording this, aren't I? So normally when we're solving an actual equation, we can multiply both sides by a number, or divide both sides by a number, or square root both sides, or something like that. When you're proving identities, you can't do that. You have to stick to one side, or stick to the other side, or work on both at the same time, and your goal is to make them match. Therefore, proving that one side really is equal to the other side. Okay, it'll make more sense when we do some examples. Okay, so then the hints, just quickly, let's just kind of go through them, and I'm going to renumber them a little bit. Start by working on just the most complicated side first. Then if you get stuck, you can start trying to work on the other side too and trying to make them match. But sometimes just working on one side of the problem is sufficient. Okay, here's another hint. It's not always the best thing to do, but most of the time it is, so it's something to try quite often. And that is write everything as sine or cosine. So that's the same hint I gave you last time. Okay, if you have problems that involve binomials, FOIL them out. So I gave kind of an example, it was probably hard to see. But if you have something like 2 sine alpha plus 1 and that whole thing is squared, you should go ahead and multiply, like rewrite it maybe so that it's all written out so you don't get lost somewhere. So squaring it would mean that entire thing and then you foil it, right? First, outside, inside, last. So let's just do that just to make sure we understand the process. So like 2 times 2 would be 4 and sine alpha times sine alpha would be sine squared alpha. And we put the squared there instead of putting parentheses with the squared on the outside, but either way it means the same thing. We've talked about that before. Um, so that was just the first. Now let's do the outside. So 2 sine alpha times 1. So that's just 2 sine alpha. Then let's do the inside. So that would be 2 sine alpha. And then let's do the last, which be, would be 1 plus 1 times 1, which is 1. So then we can simplify this as 4 sine squared alpha plus 4 sine alpha plus 1. And that sometimes will help you to simplify it if you're able to foil it out that way and then things will make sense and you're able to go from there. Okay. Another hint is to do just the opposite. If you have something like this already, you might factor it. So go the opposite direction from what we just did and take this and put it back into that. That's sometimes helpful.
I know that seems kind of crazy scary. It's a crazy scary fun. Okay, another thing to watch for is sometimes multiplying by a conjugate will help you simplify. We saw that a little bit on a problem I did with you last time that I ended up re-recording because I realized I hadn't recorded it and we were like, oh man, that was a hard problem. Okay. Um, you might take a single fraction and break it into two fractions. Or you might just do the opposite of that, and we did some of this last time, and that is combine fractions by getting common denominators first. So I realize a lot of you had already written those down based on what I showed you a few minutes ago, but I wanted to just go through them with you 